Well, here we are. We reached the end. The beginning, really. We're at the beginning. Well, we're at the beginning of the end, I guess you could say. We may be at the end of the sermon series, but we're at the beginning of everything else. We've just started our Christian year, and we are starting our new calendar year. I'm looking forward. Well, I want to look forward, too. So we're at the beginning. All right, all right. But couldn't we just take a moment to look back? I'm interested at in looking at what's gone on here these last few weeks. Fine, fine. That, that sounds like fun. You know, how the speakers do a wrap-up by making comments about what was learned through their talk that day. Mm -hmm. Well, I've done, or we've done, a good job of presenting something worthwhile the last few weeks. Let's just check it out by doing our own wrap-up. What have we learned? All right, I'll, I'll bite. What did we learn from that first dialogue sermon, the one on the end times? Mm, we learned that God is bigger than natural disasters and wars. Uh, well, yes, and, and we've learned that those scary-sounding scriptures about the end of time are, are really about peace the peace that God has for us. Our God is not content to watch us hurt one another or struggle against ourselves. God has a vision for us that leads us all into more loving and whole relationships. In that first Advent dialogue sermon about the end times, we learn that God is leading us into a better place and to a better life. Nice. That sounds good, but was I here that Sunday? <laughs> and then the next Sunday in Advent, we met John the Baptist. Uh, we learned from John that... You can lose your head worrying too much about other people's sins. <laughs> That's true enough. But the message from John the Baptist was one of repentance. He challenged us all to turn our lives over to God's love and mercy. John's message was one of hope for the new life that Jesus would bring. New hope and new love for all people, for each one of us. Mm. And then the next week. Well, we heard the other story about what happened when the angel appeared to Mary about carrying the baby Jesus. From Mary, we learned... To watch out for smooth-talking angels, no matter who they claim sent them. Oh, you are a funny one. From Mary, we learned the joy of becoming partners with God. We learned that we can all serve as co-creators with God, helping God to create a world governed by love, by justice, and by mercy. Mm -hmm. And then the next Sunday? Well, that next Sunday, we learned about Joseph. Yeah, from Joseph, Joseph we learned not to get involved with women who have found favor with God. No, we learn that sometimes God calls us to go out on a limb for one another, to love regardless of the risks, trusting in God even when it appears foolish. On Christmas Eve. Well, on Christmas Eve, we met that lovely couple, Zachariah and Martha, who ran the, uh, the bed and breakfast in Bethlehem. And from their story of Christ's birth, we learned that shepherds were smelly people <laughs> and crooks at that. But God talked to them, too. Well, uh, yes, you know, in a strange way, she's, uh, she's catching on. From the story of that first Christmas, we did learn about God's using the most unexpected people to do the most amazing things. We also learned that Christmas is not just the remembrance of a birth that happened 2,000 years ago, but it is the celebration of the birth of Christ in our lives, today, through faith. In order to truly celebrate the birth of Jesus, we have to, we have to be open to the new life that God offers us each day through Christ. And then last Sunday... Well, we met the servants of the Magi, those, those three characters that helped the Magi make their journey. They taught us... When people tell you you're going to go far in life, find out what they really mean first. Well, you know, you've got that right. Especially if they are talking about your relationship with God. 
Because when you journey with God with an open heart, the highest heavens is the limit. And that brings us to now. What are we to learn from today's scripture passage? You may want to visit the birth of the Messiah, but don't hang around too long. It's dangerous. There could be dangerous consequences. Well, what, what do you mean by that? I don't mean to sound flippant or even sacrilegious. I'm just bothered by today's gospel reading. It's a downer when you think about it. Anything but Mary. What we have before us is a story that's called the slaughter of the innocents. Well. The story about Herod ordering the death of all of the baby boys in Bethlehem. The story about Mary and Joseph and Jesus fleeing to Egypt just in time to escape his jealous wrath. That's not too Christmassy to me. Uh, yes, this is a, a troubling, a troubling passage. Many of us want a chestnuts roasting on an open fire sort of Christmas or a white Christmas or a holly and an ivy and mistletoe Christmas or a sweet baby Jesus, no crying he makes kind of Christmas. We want joyful, sentimental, and sweet Christmas. You know, there's nothing wrong with wanting all of this. Who doesn't? We all like nice and comfortable and romantic. It has its place. But the sweet and pleasant Christmas story is not what Matthew presented us with this morning. Friends, friends, we, we both have agonized over how to make sense of this morning's scripture. I'm sure many of you, when you are reminded of the story, also grimace a bit. None of us like the idea of the nativity giving way to a slaughter. But here it is in the gospel, following the nativity scene. We have to deal with it somehow. Yeah, and, and I do take some comfort in recognizing that many scholars debate the historical reality of the story. But you know, whether it's historically accurate or not, there is a lesson for us in it. Yes, and the lesson has to do with how people respond, how we respond to the birth of the Christ. God thought he'd fix everything once and for all by sharing the Messiah. Some saw what God was up to and responded through faith, but lots of people didn't go for it. Today's gospel reading is about that. They misunderstood it. They resisted it. Herod, for example, was an evil man and a, a jealous ruler. He wanted to guard with all his might the fragile hold that he had on his throne. When Herod got wind that there might be a threat to his kingship out there, well, he, he went on a rampage, deciding to kill all the babies of Bethlehem just to be sure that this potential Messiah was out of the way. In contrast, from our earlier readings, we discovered that others, like the shepherds and the wise men, understood better what was going on and responded positively. The shepherds, representative of the powerless and dis disenfranchised of the society, and the Magi, representative of the foreign Gentiles and the wealthy, both are seen coming to the manger to worship and pay homage to the newly born Christ. Instead of resisting, they are accepting, they are believing, they are acting on faith that God is doing what God has promised. And we all have that choice as to how we will respond to the birth of Christ in our lives. The shepherds, the wise men, and Herod all responded to Christ, though not all favorably. For each of us, there will be a consequence to having Christ in our lives. When we allow Christ's story to become our story, our lives will change. I guess I see it now. With Herod, it was his physical throne in Judah. With us, 
It's our internal throne. And whether we're willing to give that up for God, we have choices, just like Herod, just like all of the characters in this nativity story, choices about what we do with what God's done. Yes, I, I think that's the point here. So through today's story of the innocence and Herod, we start to see our story unfold, mm. an ongoing story about people who embrace God, believe and follow God's will, and people who turn from the love of God and resist God's ways and will. When people resist God and become more wrapped up in themselves than others, more concerned for their own well-being or power or status or whatever than the business of God, problems follow. Sadness and sorrow will rule. When people embrace God's way, a whole different set of consequences follow. Yes, God is reaching out to us to become one of us. Christmas is about the birth of God's love in our lives each and, and every day. God invites us to have a, an intimate and loving relationship. This relationship would, would nurture our very souls and would naturally seek expression in our lives. With God at the center of our being, our lives would be colored by peace, and hope, and joy, and love, and faith. So the Christmas story is really our story, as well as John's and Mary's, Joseph's, and all of those other interesting characters that we visited in our stories within the story, this Advent and Christmas tide. The Christmas story is our story, our story with God, it is the story of God becoming like us so that we can become more like God. It is the story of our lives infused with the spirit of the living God, being reclaimed by God and redirected by God. This Christmas story of the past is our story of the future. It is always our beginning. Amen. Amen.